Hey everybody, this is Captain Yeet here for you for another Avatar The Last Airbender episode review. We are finally on Season 2, Episode 1, titled The Avatar State, and we are on Book 2, Earth. So let's get into it. And I got my Wi-Fi working on my computer now, so I'll be able to upload these episodes on a weekly basis like I normally do. Well, my aunt got it working at me, so if anybody watches this, I guess thank my aunt for getting the Wi-Fi working on my computer. Finally, you know, I'm, I don't really know what's going on with my computer anyway. Let's get into it. So I was obviously after the opening, and after the opening, we have a long recap of season one. But after that, we start off with a um, dream with Aang, and he sees himself in each moment he had the Avatar state, and he gets kind of scared of it. He wakes up and he talks to Katara about it. Obviously, he saw like in this dream, he saw because obviously when you do stuff, you know, the first person perspective, you don't actually see yourself. In the dream, he saw himself from a second person perspective, and he saw how powerful he was. And how scary he can be. So that like, kind of got him soaking up a little bit. And he tells Katara that. And they say it's okay. It comes the morning time. And they're on a boat. They're on a boat with uh, Master Paku. And, <clears throat> and Master Paku gives uh, Katara a necklace with some water in it. And he says that the water came from a special lake. And the water has special properties. So don't, you, you lose it. He also gives Aang some waterbending scrolls so he can pat so he can practice on his waterbending. And also he has the waterbending scrolls plus Katara, so he'll master waterbending in no time. And he just tells Sokka, Good luck. <laughs> that, that's it. That's all <laughs> that's all he tells Sokka. And he also makes it to the Avatar group that they keep flying north. They're gonna find an Earth Kingdom not an Earth Kingdom, but a little Earth Kingdom village there where they're gonna find uh, General Fong and they're gonna escort them to Umashu, so Aang can learn earthbending from Master Bumi, well, King Bumi now. That's pretty cool. And right after that, we cut to Uncle Iroh and Zuko. And let me get to that part right there. Okay, so when they get there, it turns out Zuko, and, well, in the span of episode 20 and episode 1 of season 2, it's been three weeks, because Uncle Iroh and Zuko is at a spa, and Zuko, oh, Uncle Iroh, my bad, is getting a massage, and he mentions that they've been floating on that tiny little dinghy boat for three weeks. <laughs> it's been three weeks, so this massage is pretty nice, and it turns out today is the anniversary day of when Zuko got banished, and he had to go look for the Avatar if he ever wanted to come back home, and obviously Zuko isn't pretty happy about that. He wants to go back home with his family. Well, only family there really is Azula, which isn't really good, and his dad. But he still wants to go home. He does his home place he's been growing up his whole life. And he wants to go back to his family. Not a really good family, but, you know, family's family. So he wants to go back. Uncle Arrow kind of consoles in him. And then we cut to Azula on a boat. And she has a ton of Fire Nation soldiers and these two old ladies. Now, I know one of these old ladies in the future episodes, it turns out, that's that grandmother. The other old lady. I don't know who she is. I think, actually, I think they're sisters. The two old ladies that we see on the boat, I think they're actually sisters. One of them is actually, you know, um, gave birth to either uh, General, that's my bad, the Fire Lord, Ozai, or the mother. One, obviously, one of them gave birth to them, and the other one just didn't have kids. But one of them is the actual grandmother. The other one is just, like, the aunt, because she didn't get, have any kids. Anyway, while she's on the boat, Azula is sending a course to go capture Uncle Iroh and Zuko, because after the events of episode 20 of last season, they became traitors to the Fire Nation. So, Fire Lord Ozai wants them in prison, especially Uncle Iroh, since he was a general, and he's going to be pretty difficult to, to uh, he's going to be pretty difficult to capture. So, while she's saying this, one of the dudes comes up to Azula and tells her that the tides isn't really going to let them dock by nightfall. And I get what Azula's trying to do, like intimidate him, but it doesn't make sense. He says the tides are so crazy right now, they're not going to be able to dock by nightfall. And she starts to intimidate him by saying, do the tides run this ship? Obviously, obviously the tides don't run the ship. She does. She's the princess. So, she's like, okay, well, make us dock by nightfall or I'm going to kill you. I'm like, <laughs> obviously he's intimidation and stuff, but I don't think he's making it up. I mean, in the background, we see the waves going crazy, so I don't really get why she's so frustrated. Obviously, I guess she wants to hurry this up and capture them both so she can get back home. I guess why she's trying to hurry, but at the same time, you can't. I mean, none of these guys are on the ship or waterbenders. This is a fire nation ship. They're firebenders. So I don't really get the problem with Azula right here. She's just being mean and rude and just nasty just to be mean rude and nasty for no reason <laughs> i mean you can't really control the water if you ain't got no water benders so 
we never really see what happens. He's obviously still alive, because at the end of this episode, we see him still alive, not for too long, but I don't know. So I don't really know why it's supposed to be like this. Anyway, we we cut back to Team Avatar and they get to the little earth bending kingdom where they meet Master Fong, well, General Fong. And obviously they welcome him in and General Fong has a plan. What is the plan? He wants Aang to fight the Fire Lord right now. Obviously everybody is against it because when Aang talked to Master Roku, well Avatar Roku in the spirit room, he says that Aang needs to learn all four elements and then fight Fire Lord Ozai at right before the Sozan comic comes. But obviously, Master Fong, or General Fong, has a point. He says that, well, you can fight him even without uh, learning all four elements of the Avatar state. We heard about what you did last episode. He doesn't say that literally. But, you know, last episode that we seen, he went to the Avatar state, he made this giant fist koi monster out of water, and took out a whole fleet of Fire Nation ships in about two minutes. So the Avatar state is very powerful. But obviously, Aang can't control the Avatar state. It just happens when he's in extreme stress, when he's in like a very life-threatening type of danger. Other than that, he can't really just go in or out of the Avatar state at will. So General Fong says, you know what? I'll help you with that. Obviously, they're not agreeing to this, but then General Fong also somewhat has another point. He takes Aang, Sokka, and Katara over to the infirmary and look at all the earthbending soldiers that got injured in the last raid against the Fire Nation. There's a war going on. Even though, obviously, we don't see the war going on every episode because Appa is flying around everywhere. But obviously, we keep hearing about the Fire Nation War. There's a war going on at this moment right now while they're talking. A lot of people are dying. So he wants to just hurry up and end this war by taking out Fire Lord Ozai. And the Avatar State could probably do that. And it could, but obviously, it only really affects Aang. Or, I mean, Aang only really goes into it when he's in life threatening danger. He can't just summon it up like a transformation. You know, he just can't do it at will. So General Fon says, you know what? Give me a few days. I'll think, uh, I'll brainstorm with you a few ideas to get the Avatar State to come out so we can, like, sorry, <laughs> I messed up the wording there. Um, well, give me a few days to help you train to see how we can get you to get the Avatar State to come out. It will to see how you can go in and out of, of the Avatar State at will. <laughs> I stood a little bit there. And that's what Aang says. He agrees to it. He'll stay here for a few days and try to figure out how he can go into the Avatar, Avatar state at will. So Aang agrees to it. Well, really only Aang and Sokka. Katara is not really down for this idea right now. Because she says we should do what Avatar Roku said. Learn all four elements and then fight him the right way. But Aang kind of agrees with General Zao about how there's people dying every moment that they're talking right now. There's a war going on. So he needs to hurry up and end this war by taking out Fire Lord Ozai. So, against Katara's wishes, Aang and Sokka says, okay, and we cut to the next day where they go through a few different methods to get the Avatar State come out. There's like this one little buffer scene right in the middle where we see Azula on the deck of the ship and she conjures up some lightning and suits it out. And they did explain this later on in the series about how firebenders can use lightning because lightning, well, I forgot to, we'll, we'll get to the episode where they go to the specifics of how they can even do this. But I know it has something to do with heat, because obviously lightning has a lot of heat. <laughs> has a lot of heat to it. And fire benders obviously use fire, and that's a lot of heat. So they, I know that you can catch lightning and redirect it through your body. It has to go all the way through your body. Cause if you hold it, it's gonna like affect your heart, and you could die. So only like masters of fire bending can really do the technique. But Azula here, she's just standing, and she conjures it just by moving her hand. She doesn't catch it coming out the sky. She just conjures it. You see right here. I'm sure the volume down yep see she conjures up the lightning by just standing there and she moves her hand in certain movements and then she's able to make the lightning come out and she shoots it out into the sky and the two old ladies sitting there boom right here see she just conjured it out of her fingers she didn't like catch it out the sky like some people do she just conjured it so <clears throat> um one old lady says that was nearly perfect because, sorry, she says, that was nearly perfect. You just had one hair coming down. And literally, it was just like one piece of hair coming down in Azula's face. And she says, nearly perfect isn't fully perfect. So she comes up some more lightning, shoots it out the screen, and then we transition back to Aang and everybody trying to figure out how to get the Avatar State going. And let me get to that part. <laughs> sorry. Let me get to that part right there. The first method they try to do is they have some herbal tea. 
and this herbal tea can affect your body and make you stronger tenfold and hyper tenfold. And it does work on Aang to make him hyper tenfold because he starts to run around on his little air ball and he smacks into the wall, but obviously no avatar state. And then they mention about how, you know, I'm really only able to get into the avatar state when I'm going crazy. You know, I mean, that when I'm going crazy when I'm under intense stress. So Sokka says, you know what? How about I scare you into the avatar state? Okay, so Katara does this to cover his eyes. Then once when he moves, Sokka put uh, Momo in his shirt, scared Aang. Obviously, no avatar state. <laughs> Nothing happened. So then the last method that they try, I mean, I can kind of understand the method, but it was kind of dumb. Aang is wearing a ceremonial garb of every nation. He has a ceremonial water bending garb around his waist. He has a ceremonial, a ceremonial earth bending hat. He has this on his head. He has a ceremonial air bending necklace and a ceremonial fire bending jacket on. So he has all ceremonial. <laughs> he has a ceremonial something from each nation. And then this guy in front of him puts water into a bowl, fire into a bowl, air into a bowl, and earth into a bowl. Throws it on Aang. Obviously, that just makes mud. <laughs> and Aang says, I'm not really feeling anything. And then he sneezes and all the mud gets on everybody else. So all the ideas that they had didn't really work. We cut to Zuko and Uncle Iro chilling inside this little hut, and Uncle Iro has a ton of sea shells, and he's really excited because he can't wait to bring them with them. But obviously, Zuko's like, "We don't have a ship anymore. We're a fugitive to the Fire Nation. We have to carry everything on our own. We can't carry all these sea shells. Are you being ridiculous? <laughs> we can't carry all of these sea shells. Like you're being stupid. Out of nowhere, Azula pops up, and Azula tells them that Father has learned there's a coup in the Fire Nation trying to take them down." And only people he can really trust is family. Family is the strongest after all. So he wants Uncle Iroh and Zuko to come back home. He's he for, he's also feeling sad and uh, regretful of banishing Zuko. And obviously Zuko is like overwhelmed from all this information. Like your father wants you back to come home. You're going to be unbanished soon. Obviously all these emotions are cold enough inside of Zuko. And he's really happy. And Zuko is trying to take a moment to like take it in. And Zuko like, aren't you happy? Was he going to say something? Uncle Iroh goes, Azula, he's just trying to, shut up, Uncle. <laughs> he just yells at him for no reason. Azula, Azula is ridiculous. Obviously, Azula does see that. Obviously, Zuko is really taken aback by all this information. She says, well, our ship is going to leave tomorrow morning. Come out, come to the ship, and we'll take you home. And he's like, wow, I, I can't believe this. I'm going to go home. I'm really going to go home. He is happy. He is very happy. We cut back to Aang and Katara. There's a lot of cuts in this episode. We cut back to Aang and Katara. And Katara says, Aang, can I talk to you real quick? He's like, yeah, okay, Katara, go ahead. Katara says, do you remember when you found um, Monkey Yasu's skeleton on, at the uh, at the airbending temple? Aang's like, yeah. And you went to the Avatar State because you were in so much pain and so much rage. And seeing you in that much pain and rage really hurts the people you love. It hurts me to see you in the avatar state, because obviously when you're only in the avatar state when you have a lot of pain, rage, or if your life is in danger. And seeing him like that, it just hurts Katara's heart. And he says, I thank you for telling me this, but I'm still going to try to get the avatar state going. She's like, why? Like, just like General Fong said, there's going to be people dying every day <laughs> because of this war. She says, Aang, I'm not, you know, I, I just can't see you do this to yourself. So I'm not going to come to your training session tomorrow to get the avatar state going. So he says, okay. I mean, uh, he, I mean, he doesn't say, like, okay, fine. They're going, like, y'all mean like that. But obviously, he's like, okay. I mean, yeah, I can't stop you. You made a good decision. All right. I mean, I guess that's what we have to do. We cut back to Uncle Iroh and Zuko. Obviously, Zuko is, like, really happy. He's hyped up. He's trying to go home tomorrow. He's going to be unbanished. But Uncle Iroh, he's having second thoughts about this. Obviously, Lord Ozai, he's like, he's, it's like they don't mention this a lot in the show. But... Lord Ozai and Uncle Iroh, they're brothers. And obviously, Uncle Iroh would know his brother. So he was like, hmm, being regretful of banishing Zuko? No. Oh, I forgot about a joke. It wasn't a joke, but um, back back in the spa when the episode first started, Uncle Iroh says, come on, Zuko. Of course your father cares about you. Why would he banish you if he didn't care? <laughs> and then Zuko got up and walked away. He said, hmm. I didn't word that right, did I? <laughs> I understand what he was trying to say. But anyway, um, obviously, Uncle Iroh knows his brother. He's like, yeah, this doesn't seem like my brother at all. 
Come on, you got to be reasonable about this. You know your father too. He's regretful of banishing you. This doesn't sound like him. He says, Izuko gets really mad. He says, you know what? I know what you sound like. You're just a regretful old fool that has been guilty of your brother since the day y'all were born. And he walks away. And Uncle Iroh just looks down. Obviously, that's not how Uncle Iroh feels. He knows like this is some sort of lie or some sort of ploy to get them back to the Fire Nation country because this does not sound like Lord Oza. Even if they weren't brothers, this doesn't sound like Lord Oza. <laughs> After everything we heard he's done in this war, this doesn't sound like Lord Oza at all. <laughs> this really does not sound like him at all. We cut back to Aang, and he has another dream about him seeing himself in the Avatar state, and he wakes up screaming. He goes, Sokka... I don't think I can do this anymore. I don't think we should force on the Avatar state. I want to go back to learning all four elements. Sarkis says, really? Okay. I mean, you're the boss. All right. He says, you think General Fong would be mad? What can he say? You're the Avatar. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's kind of right. What, what really can he say? And then when, and in this point of the episode, we keep cutting back and forth about what's going to happen. So this is what happens. Every This has happened. This is what happens. Everything with Zuko. Then I almost say everything that happens with Aang. Well, obviously... No, actually, I will say everything that happens with Aang first. Everything that happens with Aang. So everything that happens with Aang is he goes to tell General Fong that he doesn't want to do this plan anymore. He just wants to go to um, Omasu to learn earthbending from King Bumi. He says, really? Yeah. <sighs> okay, well, I'm afraid you'll say this. And then he takes the whole desk that he's sitting on and pushes it at Aang. And it takes Aang flying out of the room and he lands on the ground. And he tells all his earthbending soldiers to attack Aang. Because Aang was like, you know, I think I can only really get the Avatar state when I'm in general danger. So we can't really do anything, you know? So he tells all his men to attack Aang. And it's kind of cool because the money currency, the gold is it's this circle with a square in it, you know? And they're using that to fight Aang. See, look at this. They earth bend some earth up in the same symbols. Well, this is the earth bending symbol too, but it's normally the money symbol. But this is the earth bending symbol too. Where they, they bend it up and they start to throw it at Aang. Obviously, he's dodging it and flying around. And Aang doesn't want to fight them. But they're going to fight Aang because they want him to go into the Avatar state. But it doesn't really make any sense. Because if you forcefully make him to go into the Avatar state like by attacking him like this, wouldn't he just attack you back with all this overwhelming power that you know he has when he's in the Avatar state? It doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't really make any sense fighting him like this if you know he's going to just go into the Avatar state right after this. Right? Like, that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really make any sense for me right now. Anyway, they, they continue fighting and Sokka and Katara does come out to help. Katara only comes out to help because she hears all this banging and crashing outside. She goes, you know what? Something's going on. Let me go see. Let me go make sure Aang's okay. And obviously Sokka was standing right beside Aang when he got thrown out the building. So he knows the help. They start to fight for a little bit. And then General Fong takes Katara. Well, he, oh, at first Katara throws some water at him. But then he earth bends some dirt up, and obviously water and dirt combined makes mud, so the water just flops to the ground. The mud just flops to the ground. Then he earth bends the ground around Katara and makes it go into the ground. And he goes, and then she goes into the ground deeper and deeper because he keeps doing this, and she goes into the ground deeper and deeper. And he keeps telling Aang to go into the Avatar state. He says, "I'm trying. Please, you don't have to do it." He grabs his arm. He has to beg and plead with General Fong not to kill Katara, but he says, "Hey, I don't see any glowing," and he keeps digging her deeper. And deeper into the ground, and it gets to a point to where Aang, he, he literally starts crying. Like it's, it's, it's not even funny. It's kind of sad. He literally starts to tear up because he can't do anything. Because obviously he doesn't know Earthbend, so he can't just undo what General Fong does. And he just sees Katara getting deeper and deeper into the ground, and Aang just can't activate the Avatar state. I will. He he's like at the mercy of them. See, he, he starts to cry. Like it's kind of sad. I mean, not even kind of. It's really sad how he just starts to cry and he can't really do anything to save Katara right now and eventually he digs Katara all the way underground obviously that activates the avatar state and he starts to go crazy and then we see him we see his soul leave his body and as soon as his soul leaves his body we see avatar Roku grab Aang on his dragon and start to fly around and then avatar Roku starts to talk to Aang about the avatar state what it really meant for the avatar state is a defense mechanism, obviously, to get all the past Avatar skills, knowledge, and power into one body, and then they have to do, you know, whatever they have to do in that situation. Like, you know, it's a defense mechanism for something with great pain or when your life is really in danger. <laughs> you know, the defense mechanism. But it is a very, it's a very powerful defense mechanism. A defense mechanism. <laughs> My bad, I'm missing up the word. But it's also 
a great weakness. And he's like, what do you mean? Avatar Roku says if you die in the Avatar state, that breaks the Avatar cycle, and that means no more reincarnation. Which, at first I thought that was kind of dumb, but at the same time, I guess that kind of makes sense, because when you go into the Avatar state, all the past Avatars combine into one body, so that's how you have all that massive power, because all the Avatars combine into one body, so they're all in one spot, and you just kill them all in one body, you get what I'm saying? So I guess that kind of makes sense, and at the same time, I mean, I was going to say at the same time it doesn't, but it kind of makes sense. At the same time, if that body dies and all the other avatars just scatter and get out of it, but I guess it's stuck in it. I don't know. I mean, I, it makes sense, but at the same time, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, if you die in the avatar state, that breaks the cycle, so no more reincarnation. So you better not die in the avatar state. And if someone, oh yeah, and while he's talking about the avatar state, we see all the past avatars going into the avatar state and just doing crazy stuff. <laughs> just doing some crazy stuff right here when they go into the avatar state. I mean, this, like, this is crazy. Lava. He really makes up lava. Anyway, my bad. Um, right after that, Aang's soul gets back into his body. And right after that, um, Aang, and not Aang, General Fong brings Katara back up. He's like, yo, Avatar Aang, Katara's right here. She's fine. Everything's good. And then Aang comes out of the Avatar state, slams the ground, and everything just breaks everywhere. And, and um, General Fong goes, wow, that was amazing. Now we just need to control it. And Sokka comes over, knocks him over the head, and he passes out. And then we just see everybody else. We see Katara, Aang, and Sokka get on Appa and fly to a muscle themselves. They don't need no escort from them because this was ridiculous. General Fong he was ridiculous, nearly killing her. Nearly killed Katara just for this, right? It's ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. Anyway, we cut back to Zuko. Oh, no, we don't act to that. Obviously, I said everything that happened with Aang. Everything that happened with Zuko. So, we cut to Zuko and uh, General... Sorry, we cut to Zuko and Uncle Iroh. And while they're going to the boat, obviously, um, Uncle Iroh... Sorry, Uncle Iroh keeps looking side to side because he doesn't really trust this whole thing. And Zuko says, okay, let's go. And this one dude goes, okay, you heard the princess, raise the anchor, uh, start the sails, the prisoners are going, and Azula just looks at him, he says, wait, no, I'm sorry, and then uh, <laughs> obviously Azula kicks him overboard, obviously Zuko's mad, he says, you lied to me, like I've never done that before, and then Azuko and Azula starts to fight, and the Uncle Arrow starts to fight everybody, well, just all the random fire soldiers that's just standing there, it's whatever, and when Zuko fights Azula here, he makes like some fire beams come out, of his fist right here, and he makes like the fire blades each time he punches. Which is pretty, this is pretty cool. I don't think this, I don't think this is the first time he done this, but it's pretty cool. We see Uncle Iroh fighting off all the random guards that Azula has, and then we see Zuko fight Azula. And then when he fights Azula, he has these two fire burners coming out of his fist, which is cool. These are all the fire burners I was talking about. I have to skip through. <laughs> I have to, I have to skip through uh, everything else. See, look, Zuko makes these fire burners out of his fist right here, and every time he punches at her, we see, like, these cool little blades come out. And while they're fighting, Azula just keeps, like, dogging on him. See, look, you know, Father thinks, um, you know, Father thinks that Uncle Iroh is a traitor to the Fire Nation, and he thinks you're a failure. Why would he want some failure to come back to the Fire Nation just to be an embarrassment? He's a lucky wolf in a cage, so you don't embarrass him anymore. Obviously, they get Zuko really mad. They continue fighting. Azula does scratch Zuko in the head. They continue fighting some more. But then Azula grabs um, Zuko's fist and then shoots out some blue fire and makes him um, lay down. And then later, but, you know, knocks him off his balance and he falls down on the ground. And when he looks up, Azula starts to conjure up some lightning. Obviously, Zuko's surprised because, you know, you get shot with some lightning, you're dead. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna die if you get shot with some lightning <laughs> up in your chest. So he's really shocked. And Azuko, I mean, not Azuko, um, Azula releases the lightning. But at the exact same moment, Uncle Iroh grabs her hand, absorbs the lightning into his body, and it shoots out the mountainside. Then he grabs Azula and throws her overboard. And then the last scene of this episode, we see Zuko and Uncle Ira running through the forest at the exact same time. Um, Azula just made, yeah, Azula made some wanted posters for Uncle Ira and Zuko. And obviously, <laughs> these guys are wanted. So if you ever see them, bring them to the Fire Nation now. If you ever harbor the, if you, if you ever harbor these guys, you're done for. We're going to kill you on the spot. And hangs up a ton of wanted posters. And then we see Zuko, Uncle Ira go to a river. Zuko brings out a blade. He cuts his ponytail, and Uncle Arrow does the same. They throw their ponytails into the river. And that's the last scene of the chapter, of the, of the episode. 
pretty crazy. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Zuko with his hair down looks a lot better than Zuko with his hair out. This is what Zuko looks like without his ponytail. He looks so ugly. <laughs> Zuko looks ridiculous. <laughs> Zuko looks ridiculous. But hey, it's whatever. It's whatever. But that's the last uh, scene of this episode. So, my bad for this episode coming out so late. I'll be right on time next time. So, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. I thank you all for watching. I thank you all out there for being wonderful human beings. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.